All the pretty pendants in the world. This is a 20 gauge. They're all 20 gauge, except for this one is 22 gauge. And see how you can get more detail into a much smaller pendant or stone. This is a penny next to it, so you can see how small it is. But even smaller than these. This little baby guy is done with a camera that doesn't even want to show you. This is done with 24 gauge, no, 26 gauge. 26 gauge. You can see it up close, so it looks kind of big, but these are tiny, tiny, teeny strands, like thread. Look at the size of my fingers compared to this. Here's a penny next to it. So let's have fun with this because what I find is the more you practice with the bigger wire, the more this tiny wire isn't gonna be overwhelming, but it's really fun. And you can double and triple these strands as you see, and you can move them around very delicately. Some people this might be harder, some easier, but let's just get right into it. And you can only need a teeny tiny bit of wire for this, which is the other cool part. So we're going to take some of this, 26 gauge, and we're going to take twice as long as we would need if, it, if we were just going to use a single strand, because we're going to do double. But even with this tiny stone, it's still only coming out to about 16 inches. Let's say 18 to be safe, 18 inches. So I'm cutting this wire. First thing I'm going to do is double it up, so bring the strands together. And Ah! Stuff just gets caught everywhere. All right. Once you have the strands brought together, just smooth it all the way down until you get this little loop. Just pinch it tight, but we're not gonna worry about that. That's probably gonna get cut off. We're gonna go to the end with two strands and we're gonna find ourselves a little stone like this. This is a little teeny tiny mother of pearl. It already has a very small hole drilled straight through it. But you can use any stone um, that has a hole drilled straight through for this. And we're going to take both strands and put them in there. Because we're just wild like that. Now they're fight. Got to pinch them right. Okay, there we go. And they're in. And they're wiggling down. Now we're going to bring the stone to the very center of the double the two double strands and now we're just gonna do a pattern I've done over and over again but you'll see how cool it is the first we're gonna wrap around like this to make our little bale and um, can make this big or small it's basically I usually make it a certain fraction depending on the size of the stone I feel like it just balances right usually mm, a little, about like that Make it a little bigger, because this stone is so small, you have no idea. And then we're gonna take this double strand and bring it around, and this double strand and bring it around. And I'm aiming for somewhere in the bottom off to the corner to have them cross. But you, after you cross them, you can kind of move it around so you don't have to be perfect. But now I'm, I'm pressing tight against the stone and I'm bending the strand around in a circle and then I'm bending this side around I'm holding it and so it's gonna start to make a swirl and I do I move one side a little bit at a time so I move this side and you can place this on the stone still this wire is so flexible you can press down with your thumb and literally move it if you don't like where it is I kind of like where it is but I can move it a little bit you got to be very firm but gentle move it a little bit more to the corner there and I'm pressing with my fingernail because this wire is so thin but you can make a very tight swirl I also like to leave an open swirl so I think it looks cool to see a little bit of the stone peeking through even through the swirl itself now up here right about this point I'm gonna give this a full 180 turn to tighten that loop down See if the camera even likes focusing. There we go. Hope it's been in focus most of this time. Um, now these 
two strands, I'm gonna pull that back. Actually, no, I'll go around one more time. You can go around as many times as you want. You can make a really big swirl or a very simple swirl. Sometimes the simpler swirls are more elegant. You make a swirl that's too fat and it, it overpowers the stone. So that's already more than I would like, but I'm gonna open them up like this now and push it a little more in the corner, open it up a little more. I take a, like I'm very patient with placing the wire exactly where I want. I feel like it's more elegant and it only takes a second. So I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna fold these two over and fold them over again. And now we're just gonna come straight up and wrap it around the loop to make a little scarf, but we wanna have like a, a bend in each one. So I'm gonna bend it first like this, bend it over, over as much as you need. So give it a bend, bend it all the way up. And then I'm gonna bring these two back down. So now you see it gave it that nice curve in there. And I want them to come together at the very top. So I'm pinching it very carefully. And as much as these wires are so thin, look how I have them separated so they're not crossing over each other. All four are side by side. And I'm using my fingers to flatten them to keep it like that because that gives it a really pretty effect. Believe it or not, you can see the difference. And normally I would scarf it around and around, but look, I already have four strands coming up and I'm just gonna end it like that. So I'm gonna come around the back like this. And now I'm just gonna carefully cut those four strands halfway across the loop so that they can be tucked in. It's very careful, take my pliers, I mean my cutters. And you, if you get this off by half a millimeter, go back in and fix it if you need to cut it again. Don't, don't say, oh, it's close enough. Because if it's too far, it's not gonna tuck right and you will see it just it'll look messy or whatever so this this is a tricky part tucking is always a tricky part my suggestion is you make many 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 pieces and just force yourself to tuck every single one tuck in the sharp ends because see I'm already gonna cut them a tiny bit more because they're sticking out too much and they're not gonna tuck I had to wiggle it because there's these cutters won't it's, it's so thin the cutters don't just clip it like they would a bigger wire. Now I'm very carefully aware of all four of these and I'm just tucking them very gently. Like you could almost need a magnifying glass for this, the precision, because you want to get them tucked in really well. You see that? You're looking at this very magnified. The, these are literally like so tiny. Actually, I can see it better by looking at the camera than, than looking at the piece. Come on, focus. And then the camera decides, I'm complimenting you, camera. Why are you suddenly deciding to defy me? This camera's like a smart ass. All right. Anyway. So. Good Lord. Let's see if we can get him to focus. Okay, here comes the fun part and then the not fun part at the very end. Um, these two should not have crossed over each other, so this is not going to be fun. The not fun part is I use my fingernail a lot. I really can't tell you how to use pliers because I don't know if they make pliers small enough to, to mess around with these strands. But these two, I didn't want them to cross over, so that's messing me up. Uh, I'm going to have to get this one over. To always be aware of your strands that they're staying side by side and not crossing over each other at all given times. All right, so I'm gonna have to fix this back here. Da, 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 where does this happen? Ugh, this is gonna make the video like twice as long just messing with this dumb thing. Oh, got it, I got it, okay. Now. Get up, get up, all right, yes, 
Now, this part is just taking your fingernail and separating these to be equidistant. And they're gonna keep moving and you're gonna have to keep playing with them. And then you take this side and do the same thing. And the more you move one side, the more the other side's gonna move. So you gotta go back and forth, which is fine. But really be, this is where you really wanna um, make sure it looks just the way you want. Don't let them get away with being less than the way you want them to be, because this is your piece. Now, if, if you bend it and it sticks out a little bit like that, you can go in the back and crimp it, like teeny, teeny, tiny little crimp. But make sure you have a good grip of the wire, straight up and down, perpendicular, and just turn, and that will tighten it up. Now, these are crossed. These ended up crossed, but at least I fixed the cross and made it go in the back so that they're not, you don't see the cross in the front, so that's fine with me. If I had paid attention better, I could have kept them from crossing the whole time, but that's okay. You can live and learn from my mistakes. All right, so we come back to the front. We just crimped a bunch of them, and now they're pretty equidistant. I'm pretty happy. I, I really like this pattern, but if I, if I needed to fix them, I could fix them again. This is all fingernail work. If you don't have fingernails, you can uh, call 1-800-RENT-A-FINGERNAIL. That's a, that's a new a new phone service I think I'm going to invent before I put this video out. Um, all right, so normally I just throw some E6000 on the back here so these don't slide up and down. And you could do that. Lately, I've been trying to be more of a purist and stay away from that because that stuff eventually can rub off. So I am going to take, again, the tiniest bit of wire, which I don't have anything thinner than 26. I'm just going to loop it through there. This is a little tricky, too. These, the crimps will help the wire catch it, but I'm going to have to get my fingernail under each part and just give it a little lift as I wiggle the wire under. Be patient. This is my least favorite part, but after this, it's done. I only took about five inches for this. That's going to be way too much, but I, I, it's so, so little wire. I just, I took the extra just to have stuff to work with that I'm eventually going to cut off. So if you take too little, then you can't get it a good grip. So taking my fingernails now and I'm priming each of these by giving them a little lift and back. Now this might affect the front, which is fine. We'll go back and fix it if we need to, but there we go. And it's getting under there. I got it under two of them so far. Oh, oh, I got them under all three. Believe it or not, the first couple ones I did, this took like several minutes of struggle. A couple of them I had to get them under by bending the wire and pushing the fold of the loop under instead of just the sharp end. But in any case, bring this once again to the about the middle. Don't have to be perfect. Fold it over. See that? Now I'm, I'm going to try to cross these into a, as tight a loop as I can. But there, it's wrapped around all four strands. And... This camera is really good at focusing up close on this tiny piece until it doesn't want to be. Then it's awful. And anyway, twisting it, twisting it. You don't have to twist it more than once or twice, but we're going to fold this around really tight. We're going to try to blend it into the scarf so you don't even see it. Pull it really tight so you don't even notice. And you can go around a few times. Do I want to go around a few times? Yeah, I left room to, so I could build the scarf up a little higher. So I'm gonna go around one more time because that just makes it sometimes a little bit more secure. Right at the top, right up there. And once again, I'm gonna cut it halfway across, just like this, very carefully. Careful not to cut any wires you don't want to. You mess up the whole piece if you cut that loop. And if, you might have to start over if you did that and tucking, tucking them on a diagonal. I'm tucking them by pinching. I'm, this part is holding the front and this part is just shoving them right into that bowl in a diagonal. In and down, tucking them. Now notice that my, the loop at the top, which I'm calling my bail, which technically it isn't because I'm gonna use jump rings for the actual bail, but you could turn this a quarter turn and make it the actual bail, but 
See how these strands are kind of not even? You can just fix that like this. Voila, now they're blended right in. And if you need to fix it a little more, you can just gently move around and pinch it. Or you could take your round nose if you want, if you're worried that it's, but the flat nose is really good for that kind of thing. Now, these are secure, they're not moving. Uh, that, that little security part is, is kind of sliding up and down. So give it a little crimp. Whenever things feel loose, give them a crimp if you can, if it's not gonna mess up your design. Sometimes crimps make the design cool, but in this case, we don't want crimps in the front. We want the front to be nice and flowing and beautiful. Like that. Now, did any of our strands move? A little tiny bit. These two, there's a little bit of a gap here. And we want these two, there we go. These, uh, this one's down a little further than I'd like, but they're basically about right. I'm happy with that. I think that looks really cute. Gonna get the tiniest jump ring or two jump rings and then the tiniest chain. And again, you're seeing this really close in the camera. It looks um, like it's a substantially, ugh, now the camera's mad at me. It looks like it's, you know, pretty decent sized stone, but this is really, tiny it is literally one centimeter wide half an inch so we're going to give it a very dainty chain voila hmm i wonder if i should have used this back black background the whole time it's really popping on this to get it this chain i actually got a whole lot of them i think i got about 10 or 20 of them it was on amazon it was antique copper chain basically either pack or lot something like that and these came up, this is literally like two or three millimeter length, if you want to type that in. But cute little, I think they're five millimeter jump rings. And that will finish it off. These come already with a lobster clasp at 18 inches, but I like these little teeny tiny necklaces sometimes to sit up really high like a choker almost. So I think I'm gonna cut it to 16. Now, if you have someone with a, with a thicker neck and they want the 18 and you want to wait to cut it, that's up to you. Some people like them to hang really long. They could do 24. But for most people, I think 16 looks really good. So I'm going to measure off about two inches and cut it. Put the um, jump rings back and we'll be ready to go.